Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be visiting and also talking about the comet we actually landed on a few years ago known as 67P Churumov Gerasimenko. In today's video we're going to talk about some of the discoveries we've made since the landing and also talk about a very recent image that was actually uh, all over the place including Twitter that showed you what it actually looks like on the surface of this beautiful comet. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So this right here is a virtual representation of the comet in Space Engine, but it is actually extremely accurate, both in size, in appearance, and also in a lot of other physical elements. So this particular rocket um, is actually what's known as a Jupiter family comet. And as a matter of fact, it used to be an asteroid. Uh, for pretty much its all, whole existence, it was not a comet. And, and then something like 200 years ago, back in 1840, uh, Jupiter's gravitational field basically caused this comet to move a little bit closer to the sun. And when uh, that happened, it's... Uh, perihelion, or basically closest um, approach to the sun, decreased uh, quite dramatically. I believe it decreased from about 4 to about 2.77 astronomical units, and that's when it officially became a comet, because now it was actually close enough to the sun to start experiencing um, a lot of heat, a lot of radiation that would actually start removing the um, ices from this comet. Let's actually change the color scheme here so we can actually see the night sky as well, uh, the ice from the comet started escaping and it started producing the cometary tail. Now, interestingly, um, this didn't stop Jupiter from influencing it even more. As a matter of fact, back in 1959, it sort of budgeted uh, a little bit again, and this time it, uh, its perihelion decreased uh, by pretty much half. It went down to about 1.29 astronomical units, and that's actually, that's, that's a lot. That's, that's essentially um, the region of space where, uh, well, technically Earth is orbiting at one astronomical unit. And this meant that this comet suddenly lit up in the night skies and you could actually see it from pretty much uh, everywhere if you were using powerful enough telescope. Now, the scientists who found this, uh, at first were looking for another comet and they didn't really realize what they were looking at. And these two scientists, specifically, it was actually a male and a female, uh, Klim Churumov and Svetlana Gerasimenko, were actually working for the uh, USSR. Uh, they were working from the Ukrainian University in Kiev. And uh, they, when they discovered this comet, um, they were basically the first to point out what this was and where it was. And uh, since then, it was actually kind of not really studied at all until basically relatively recently, when um, back in the uh, early 2000s, there was a, a mission proposal to essentially land on a comet, and this particular object was chosen simply because of its relatively uh, unique orbit, and because it actually came pretty close to Earth, and also because it wasn't really um, going to be destroyed anytime soon by the Sun, because its um, orbital parameters were changed relatively recently. And so, in 2014, we came here and we landed a probe. This was the Philae probe. You may have actually been following this on TV or you may have heard about it. Um, but it was a probe that essentially, well, so let's try to reenact it. It first um, came relatively close to the comet at a distance of about 30 kilometers and assumed an orbit around it. There were two parts to this particular probe. One of them stayed in orbit, uh, essentially taking photos and analyzing the surface features. And the other one, separated and started moving closer and closer to the comet. And its mission was very simple. It was supposed to use um, harpoon, it was also supposed to use uh, these unusual screws that it had, and also its thrust uh, engine to try to attach itself to the surface of the comet. But it just so happens that all of these things failed and it bounced off the surface because of the low gravity. And then it kind of moved closer again because of the gravity, but once again bounced off the second time. And only on the third attempt did it actually finally land, but we lost contact with it. And we lost contact for a very simple reason, because it actually landed 
somewhere right here on the dark side of the comet in a crevice pretty much away from the sun so it, it did get the sun eventually but it was sort of in the shadow for a very very long time as a matter of fact this is almost exactly where it was um and finally uh, months later we were able to reestablish contact and actually see what it sees but until uh, that period of time we didn't really know what happened to the uh philae uh, component of of the mission now because this comet uh, spins actually pretty fast its rotation is about 12.4 uh, hours and this meant that at some point philae would actually start receiving the sun and start getting uh, solar radiation to power up his batteries and eventually got enough energy to basically uh, start transmitting messages again. So this took a few months, but it finally happened. And also started taking photos and analyzing the surface and also uh, analyzing the subsurface features as well. Um, and we discovered quite a lot of new things about uh, the comet since then, and some of them are actually very interesting. Okay, one of them is that apparently this comet accelerates with time. As a matter of fact, its rotation has increased uh, by a few minutes um, since 1959, uh, mostly due to uh, the expulsion of various ices from the surface. And these ices, as they basically escape the comet, they kind of basically act like thrusters, like engines. They accelerate the rotation. And this means that eventually this comet will probably break into two pieces and then possibly even fall apart even more. Um, it does have quite a few millions of years left in it, but it will disappear at some point. Um, we also discovered a lot of other really interesting things. Specifically, we, we were able to um, analyze the surface composition and discover that most of this comet is covered by dust, about 20 centimeters of uh, dust on the surface here. But some parts of it are actually very rocky and solid. And underneath the dust, there's a lot of really solid ices. And uh, this ice, even though it's kind of porous and has holes in it, is still very thick and very uh, hard. So basically, this comet does have somewhat rocky surface underneath the dust. We also discovered that there's a lot of um, activity on the surface. Specifically, we found sinkholes, basically holes uh, that were created by certain interactions. And we also saw things falling apart, like there was a, a cliff that just fell over. Um, there was even um, what seemed to be a landslide that was detected by Philae um, a few months ago. So there's definitely quite a lot of stuff going on on the surface here. But that's not all of the discoveries. As a matter of fact, a lot of those discoveries were also chemical. So one of the most important ones was that we were actually able to analyze the water on the surface of the comet and discovered that, well, this water is very different from the water on Earth. In terms of the composition of deuterium and hydrogen, it is exceptionally different. In other words, we now are almost convinced that water did not come uh, from the comets as we assumed before, even though this was a, one of the hypotheses for the creation of water on Earth. On the other hand, we also realized that um, Except for water, there's other things here that make this comet, or maybe other comets, exceptionally different and very, very interesting. For one, we detected oxygen. And not just any kind of oxygen, we detected free oxygen, like O2, the stuff we have on Earth. Where and how it got here is an interesting question, because we always assumed that oxygen um, was actually not really... Um, able to survive in outer space for very long and specifically we didn't really think it even existed on comets we also detected a lot of organic molecules at least 16 specifically and a lot of these organic molecules are often associated with life so obviously this created a lot of buzz in astrobiological community with people talking about how maybe just maybe just maybe just maybe this actually has some sort of life on it but that's a really big speculation we're not really going to go that far until there is any proof now, except for all of this uh, unusual discovery, I guess the biggest one was really the video. The video that was uh, compiled from photos taken by Philae that you see on the screen right now that shows you this really, really awesome, really cool and absolutely incredible view of what it's like to stand on the surface of a comet for a few hours. And what you see here are the little particles, little um, ices escaping from the surface as the uh, comet is being illuminated by the sun. 
Now, all in all, this is actually one of the coolest and most amazing missions we've ever been able to sort of um, execute and successfully uh, retrieve data from. And it was so successful, as a matter of fact, that now there is um, another mission that's being planned and hopefully we'll have enough funding to succeed, where we actually want to go back here and try to collect a piece of rock or a piece of ice, or essentially a sample, to try to bring back to our planet Earth. But other than that, that's kind of all we know about uh, this really awesome, really beautiful comet. And for now, we're going to escape it and come back to it when we learn something else. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.